right, we, we got our, our uh, faithful out there. Uh, welcome back uh, to another uh, episode of Elise TV. End uh, it over. We'll play uh, telephone. Thank you. Um, we are uh, going to be a fun show today. We are going to do the uh, uh, spring uh, club shipment is going to be part of our tasting today. Um, we got eight wines to get through, and we're going to jump right in, and uh, we're going to uh, bring back uh, the grand return of Longinou coming back to Elise. For those of you that know this wine, this will be a, 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 an easy one to remember and talk about its popularity. Um, we're actually going to have uh, one of our newer staff members is going to come on camera here in just a sec and uh, present this wine for you as well. Before we get to that, though. Uh, since we're talking about Spring 2021 Wine Club, there is somebody you all need to meet on camera today. Uh, because every time the phone rings and every time your club ship gets you perfectly on time, on target, there's one person here at least that makes all of this happen. Uh, so let's bring on Melissa Bond. Without on, further uh, ado. Man. Like all oh, clap boy. for Melissa, man. <laughs> Um, Melissa is the only original staff member left here at Elise from the Ray and Nancy days. That's true. Um, yeah. It's true. Melissa, 30 seconds or what, what you got? Tell well, us about yourself. I gotta say that, uh, just being in front of the camera is not what I like. I prefer to be on the other side of the phone. These guys are the showmen, so a little, little strange to be here, but, uh, yeah, it's true. I've been here with Elise just a little over four years, and when... Josh and Cheryl took over a couple years ago. I asked if I could start the wine club and I've been doing it ever since. This is kind of my favorite time of year. We get to bring out some new wines. I get to chat with club members. Um, anything you need, anything you want, I'm the person that you would be giving a call to. So this is our this is our new lineup. It's a fun lineup. I'm really excited about the Longinou. That was one of my favorites. I was heartbroken when it left. And I'm so happy to have it back. Well, with that, while you're chatting, Garrett, I'm going to have you step off. And I want you guys to meet one of our other uh, uh, staff members behind the scenes, now getting to the front of the scenes. This is uh, Rachel Rudd here at the end of the bar. Hello. Rachel, I want you to jump right in. Yes, thank you, Christopher. Uh, Rachel is going to present our, uh, our, is it 2019? It's 2019. It still, is. Like, it still feels like science fiction to me when we're talking about 2000 anything, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, just by quick reference, do you do you know off the top of your head how much of this we made? A hundred. I know exactly. Go ahead. A hundred and ten cases. A hundred and ten. Well, apparently it's a hundred and nine and eleven bottles. Yes. <laughs> Maybe eight. Actually, a hundred. A hundred cases after I drink the other ten. Yeah. Well, Rachel, welcome on camera yeah. for the first time. Thank man. you, Christopher. They have been standing behind these cameras and back there in the back office, laughing and pointing at us the entire time we're doing these shows. <laughs> So we thought it'd be fun. We're still trying to lure uh, Cheryl onto a show so we can do the uh, the other half of the brain perspective on some of these wines. Matter of fact, we should build a show and do favorites and do blind tastings, and we should do the the, the two different perspectives: the you know the male perspective and then the crazy one. Oh, you oh. mean <laughs> you mean the gender that has better taste buds? Yes. None of us have ever <laughs> proven thought it was by fair science in the wine business that you guys get Ooh, this big boy. box of crayons to play with when it comes mm -hmm. to wine, and us big, yeah. big cheap pencil knuckleheads, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. have to work harder at it. You do. Okay. So you want to talk about this wine a little bit? Yeah. Cool. What you got? Just like Melissa, the Longinou is probably uh, my favorite thing that we're releasing right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's sixty percent Roussan, forty percent Viognier. It's Rhone style white. It's a. Uh, Does one... that add up to 100? <laughs> I hate it when I get the okay, math wrong. Okay, yeah, thank worry. you. I was well, like, okay, go. Well, please continue. It's yeah, easy no, when I, it's two percentages. Yeah. Wrong. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's 60 your 40. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is, like Melissa said, we're bringing this back from Ray and Nancy. They had this. They started in 2003 to 2013, mm -hmm. and now we're bringing it back in 2019. Um, so the Viognier is coming from Bennett Valley, uh, Roussan is coming from Clear Lake. Um, it's the perfect Rhone White in my for my palate. Um, it has that beautiful waxiness from the Roussan and then this um, bee honey thing going on with the Viognier. Are there other kinds of honey than bee? <laughs> <laughs> is there an animal that's been holding out we don't know Do about? Do we need to get into <laughs> bee honey? Is it vegan? Is it non-vegan? Like is the wine honey, vegan? Actually. Is that a thing? Oh God. I need to just point out that this wine, uh, because so little was made, it's going to be pretty much a wine club exclusive. You're only going to be able to get it. If you're in the wine club, uh, there is a limit. If you do, if you're interested in any way, you would have to call us. We will never have this 
on the website and it would just be something that that is a really, really small production wide. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. kind of thinking about it, 100 and how many? Yeah. 20 cases? 110 cases. Yeah, that's like two barrels and change. Yeah. I know. Man, like, that's yeah. just not a lot. So, again, we've never made a series of wines here that we'll call club only wines, yeah. but as a club member, anything that's roughly under 200 cases never really sees the, right. the light of day. Right. Which kind of sucks if you're in the tasting room and you really want to play with this wine. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to play with this wine, but at least I can drink it. Yeah. Yes. Um, Melissa, I, yes. I, I, I say thank you to you. I know right. it was tough for you to, to, you know, come out here. I mean, literally, when she walks off camera, she's going to go right back to that laptop I've heard and that my, phone. I've heard my phone ring we about four just, times. We just <laughs> sent out the, all the spring shipment information mm-hmm. and all that, so everybody's madly calling in, talking about doubling and tripling their orders. Thank you for your enthusiasm. All right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, when you call into the uh, Elise Wine Club, you now have a, a visage to go with that little thing voice on the phone. We already have a question in the back. Uh, yeah, it says somebody noticed they can only add two to their shipment. That's absolutely right. Yes. Can they not get more? Call Melissa directly. She'll tell you the different answer. Yes. Oh. You have to call me. That's a very private yes. uh, conversation that we will have, um, not for public. Yes, Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Give me a call, and I'll be there to, to talk you through it. If you want the best coconut, you got to climb the highest palm tree sometimes, <laughs> people. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. I feel like we're doing one of those great talk shows. Who's going to come on next, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, what else you got for this wine? Like, uh, put it in perspective in other white wines. If you were going to tell somebody what makes this different from a Sauvignon Blanc or a Chardonnay, mm. what would you kind of hit them with? It's full to medium body, mm-hmm. whereas to me, a Sauvignon Blanc can be light to medium. Um, this just intrigues me from start to finish. Uh, you know, I, I lived in New Zealand for a year and a half, and I love Sauvignon Blancs. I, I it's like children. Like you don't say, "Oh, you're my favorite child. You're my least favorite child." Oh, of course you do. But Savion Blanc is. Well, I don't have children. That's why I don't know. <laughs> but Savion Blanc is uh, one of my least favorites. Whereas something with um, more oomph, more full body white. That's not just your typical California Chardonnay, which I love. I have my love for my Chardonnay with my truffle chips. You know, there's a time and place for that. This is just so different and interesting. Um, there's not a lot of white rum varietals planted in California. It's like 2,000 acres. It's one of the toughest grapes to find growing well it's, out there, man. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is just different, exciting, nice. and interesting. Any quick food pop in your head when you taste this? Ooh. I'm on this truffle kick right now. All right, all right. So just truffles. Pretty much anything truffle, we put anything. truffles on. Yeah. Is that gonna, With this yeah. waxiness, like the truffle and the waxy from Roussan just really, really gets me going. All right, man. Rachel, thanks. I appreciate you, you jumping yeah. in here. We're going to try to lure her on to do more of these shows with us. I mean, not that, you know, Cubby and I don't love staring longly into each other's <laughs> eyes during these shows week after week. But part of what we're constantly trying to engage in is the, the vast perspectives that can really approach the same wine. And so we're always endlessly curious what other people are going to say or what their perceptions are so yeah anything else you want to say as a, as a parting note no spring club nothing you're good no come out and visit us we are psyched to have you yeah, guys no come kidding. and visiting well said, again you know. it, the sun is shining it's california we're ready just bundle up yeah we're the outside tastings we're open for business in napa valley the restaurants are retooling we're all getting open I'd say by this summer we should be back to full tilt boogie unless something completely yeah. insane happens again. But uh, Which you never uh, know. Good on you. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Cubby, Thank ready you. to jump back in here? Uh, so you've got the 2019 Longinou, Um and then we're going to move right into some people uh, over the years have made a request for the wine club because we're always malleable. We're always trying to, to make it as easy for people to enjoy this club and, and its accessibility is... Some people don't want something creative like a Longinou, and I don't mean that from a stifling standpoint. It's just something their palate prefers a Chardonnay. And since we're not going to do a separate release for the 2018 vintage of Chardonnay here to lease, some club members will sub in the Chardonnay uh, for the uh, Longinou. So we're going to be tasting the 2018. And before we get to the 18 Chardonnay in terms of notes, uh, was there anything you wanted to add it to sort of the tasting notes from the Longinou? Uh, good question. I think the ladies did an impeccable job, which yes. will uh, help uh, release maybe both of us from doing this all the time, even though we love it. But I kind of think you'd rather watch them 
Uh, and Just your viewer numbers go up immediately. They're really they're that? better yeah. at it across the board. <laughs> um, and Rachel was right. They are better tasters most of the time. So, um, so to the Longinou... It's just there's so I think Rachel touched on it. There's there's not as many Viognier, Marsan, Roussillon planted around, especially Northern California. Um, Southern California it seems like Paso Robles, and there are places that kind of specialize in that. But we lucked out with some really cool vineyards yeah. that Russell had connections to, uh, and it's a really great wine. You see Chardonnay and you see Sauvignon Blanc all the time, and both are great. Uh, you find the producers that produce them in your style, but this can be a departure and an addition to your white wine loves. So, for sure. Uh, really cool stuff. So, now on to the... Yes, oh. for those of you that are experienced, just FYI, at two barrels, basically, uh, well, actually 110 cases, so four, almost five barrels, I should say, um, we didn't want to do a lot of heavy filtration on that Longinou. So, don't be yeah. alarmed. It's going to be unfiltered and unfined, so there might be a little... A little sort of murkiness look yeah. to the wine. It's okay. It's part of the texture with a super, super, super small production. So Yeah, unlike Jimi Hendrix purple haze, this would be yellow <laughs> haze. Maybe a gold straw haze. And by the way, it was really cool. During the show, one of our uh, clients here at the winery uh, did a will call today. So came up, saw his name on the box right there at the uh, tasting room outside, picked it up, mask on. So the protocols are still in place, guys, but we're open for business. So by all means, um, come and see us. Uh, 18 Chardonnay, let me tell you, man, uh, anything that's got an 18 on it for me right now is one of my hands down favorite wines, just because this was our first day, you know, the Chardonnays came in, and this was just some of the early wine we were making here to lease, and so we were just psyched to to have a new uh, clubhouse to play with, and uh, and if there's one grape that I think we champion as much as anything, is I think we make a tremendous collection of Chardonnays here. I Very really much like so. Style. Yes, question. How does the 2019 Longinou compare to the original Longinous? Um, if I wanted to field that question, I would say you're going to probably see the acidity down a little more and the richness and full body go up a, a couple of degrees. And I know we introduced at least one beautiful new French oak barrel to this whole equation and the rest went into steel. So there's going to be a little of that richness uh, from, uh, from an oak barrel addition as well. So just, just a little amplification for lack of a better explanation. Great call. And also, we're tasting this just over a year after the fruit was picked. Uh, whereas so we didn't, ago, well, yeah. I mean, I definitely had Longinou from Elise way back in the day, but they stopped making it, I think Rachel said in 2013. 13, I believe, yeah. So we didn't take over till 18, so we didn't get to even try one of those till five years after. So there's also, we're not really playing with apples to apples because there was already five years of age before we even got to try what Ray made. Um, but yes, I, I think he hit the nail on the head. A little more richness. But still has that classic waxiness of uh, of the Roussan. You know, it's funny moving straight into the Chardonnay. Now this one is star bright, as it's known in the fancier Psalm world. Um, and I got to tell you, you know, one of the creative challenges when you make a series of Chardonnays is how do you make sure that they all have a personality different from the others, so that you're not making ten versions of the same wine. And the, the Smith farming that goes into this wine, I love this. This is a full California Chardonnay, but it is crisp and clean. It, it really There's is. A really, really nice clarity to this wine in terms of the freshness and the finish. And um, it's not weighted down by a, a ton of the, the malolactic butter. It's not weighted down by over the top oak and heavy lee stirring, so that it's kind of creamed out. It's not afraid to have a little crispness to it. You know? Yeah, I would just classify this wine purely as balanced. The, yeah. You know, there's oak, you know, there's some new oak involved little bit of mallow but everything just comes succinctly together which is really cool it's a bright nose there's really good acidity you get the oak but none of them are separated they just come together and they're kind of harmonious and the great thing about our club once again is and we're going to taste it here in flight is even though you haven't evolved into enjoying white as well as red and you're still drinking red wines only i totally respect that so our club is malleable and that you can change the club up at any moment to whatever your needs are and to whatever your preferences are. So we offer what we call the classic club here at least six bottles twice a year. We like spring and fall because you're kind of avoiding all the hot months and all that. Um, Shipping wise. Yeah. That's and there's, there's a red wine only version. So really we're trying to, to, to make it easy for you to, to get exactly what you want, change it to exactly what you want. 
And that's what Melissa ran off to do is once we launched that wine club release, the phone, I mean, we sent the email today. Oh, it's it was like click, enter, send, 30 seconds later, ring phone. You know, I love that response from the club and I love the enthusiasm. We were really worried during the time of COVID that we were going to see a big reduction in club enthusiasm. And it's been the opposite. So thank you for all of yeah. your support and, and enthusiasm out there for sure. And it's also thank you to Ray and Nancy, but also Josh and Cheryl for putting together clubs that are amazing. You get one bottle of six different wines and then you get to see what you like best. And you're not committing to, you know, six and six and three or six and six and six for, um, you know, uh, half a year shipment, which can kind of break the bank. Super reasonable, so much so that Josh and Cheryl put together a collection of wines that kind of outdid the normal price point. So how to fix that? We didn't change the wines. We kept the wines there. We just added another 5% off, so it dropped it down into Come that on. comfort zone, which is awesome. Who does that? You will love me! It's like, we're, we're just going to give you as good or better wines and then adjust the price point to make sure that nobody's, you know, feeling slighted. Which For those of you who awesome. log on with questions or comments, you know who you are. Um, we will do our best to get to all of them. If we don't get to your question or your comment online, Chris Carpenter, uh, <laughs> we, will, uh, we will at least make fun of you later after the show. So please don't take it personally if we don't get to everybody's comments. They have been amazing, and I love that people are watching this show more and more these days. Um, I think the nature of remote tastings. Now, you want to talk about that a little bit? Because you're doing quite a few of them as well. What's your vibe, man? When you're doing a tasting with someone that's 2,000 miles away and we've sent them the wine, how is that different for you than having us kind of sit around the picnic table out here and talk about how great it is to be us for another day? I mean, <laughs> I always enjoy being in front of people. That's, I mean, that's why I'm in this business. Even more than the wine, I could do it over vodka, I could do it over rum or gin. I mean, there has to be alcohol involved. Um, <laughs> Apparently, I like alcohol, not people, but I really do like alcohol and people combined. Um, no, but it's uh, it's turned into a really good thing. The first ones are for me. Oh my God, how, what are we going to talk about? And I don't, I just don't want to talk about wine. So it's much easier for me to connect with people when they're right in front of me, see what they like, see what they don't like, and we customize every tasting. So when you're shipping the wine. We're customizing it before you ever order it and make sure it's wines that you and your crew of people like to drink. But we've had amazing success with it. You, I know, all of us. Uh, it's been an amazing thing. We're going to start actually introducing some wine saver uh, oh, wow. options for you to add into your tasting package. So opening four to six bottles in one tasting could be a lot, especially when there's only two of you. Uh, if it's us two, it's no problem, but you could open all six bottles and then plug in these little savers, wine savers, and go back two weeks later, and those wines are going to be So one of our comments, condition. by the way, from last week's show was people started to notice that every wine we taste, we start out standing up like this, and, we and by like the fourth or fifth wine, we're just kind of like by the sixth wine, you know, they just like, they, we just keep panning down. In the beginning the of these, I was real... <laughs> He's taller than I am. I'm like, I'm going to make myself taller. But I like to just chill. Yeah, we bought the uh, Tom Cruise box at auction. So we stand oh, on that so that we have the same, uh, yeah, on, on camera for sure. I but. need those extra three inches. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't <laughs> I do know. it. Okay. So, all right. So tastings, the Zoom tastings are a huge hit. People are loving them. We're loving them because we've gotten into our groove. You I think can we've done anything, like whatever you want to do. I mean, almost two hundred Zoom tastings we've done since the beginning of March, which is the same time we we started this little Elise TV. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, love the participation. We've done as many as a hundred people on one Zoom. Um, two things about doing remote tastings. One. Don't forget to mute your laptop because it's really bizarre to hear that, all the background the noise and the echo. And number two, people, could you please pick a room that has some kind of artwork on the walls, man? Like these weird, stark, blank walls when you taste wine in it. Just cheer up, man. Pick something cool. Sit on your sofa. Relax. Well, also you know? with Zoom, I think everybody's kind of figured it out. You can have a picture on your your laptop or whatever and use that as the background. Oh, my God. It was so awesome. Our last Zoom tasting. The guy kept changing it. It was like, you're in the Bahamas right yeah. now. Like, I love that beach. Yeah. 
All right, question. Yes. We got a question. Uh, do you have an example of the lightsabers to show? Um, what do we do with those? Yeah, models? I do actually. Here, uh, talk about the wine for two seconds. I'll go grab one for you. Yeah, we did a little uh, experiment with those wine savers. Uh, they're called Repour, R-E-P-O-U-R. Uh, as soon as we get them in, we're going to uh, figure out how they fit in our packaging. And for people doing a Zoom tasting, um, we'll figure out what it actually is. Um, whether it's six bottles for a Zoom tasting, we're gonna throw that in for free. So you can go through all the wines, and then plug them in and revisit them within a week or two. One little repour spout uh, takes care of one bottle. So it's a single use thing, but you can keep plugging it in and keep getting life out of the bottle. So we're really happy about that. We're eating the costs on that, but passing on an amazing value to you. So you can actually experience the tasting fully and then also um, go back with the wine. So this is one little unit of the report. It will come with a little tab on it. Take that off. And basically the thing is there's uh, metallic features inside this uh, um, black rubber part that metallic features man. sucks the <laughs> oxygen out of the bottle. So un like you can't see it, but inside it will rust because that's just what happens when metal gets wet or absorbs too much oxygen. Uh, it kind of rusts inside, so it's sucking all the ox, ox almost like a magnet to the oxygen. Um, so it's taking it out of there, and then it's preserving that wine. So we've had very good success. We did it with all sorts of variable controls. We feel comfortable with it, and so we're just adding that so value. Experiment. Like you'll come into work some days, so there'll be two glasses on the table, no bottle, no label, just A and B. Taste them, make a mark on which one your favorite is, and the little preserve. What are they called? Repours, Repours. preservers. Anyway, the little the little preserver test we did, I was impressed. I thought the wines were in really great shape. Yeah, and they are one time use, um, but the cost of them and the fact that uh, the packaging, as far as recycling, is actually so really can I good. See that for a second. Yep. So the the secondary purpose that we're already looking at is this little reservoir on the top <laughs> might be just big enough. So we figure if we pop it upside down, I think we can use them as a tee on the golf course. So we're gonna. We're gonna Grant's gonna film us out on the driving range and we'll we'll test the test market and see if it works that way. Yeah, so it's called repour, but when he hits, it means reform. Because <laughs> we'll be looking for balls all over the place. Uh, Let's see how many of mine did we find the other day? Oh, that's right. Oh, all every of one of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bad time to make that joke when he finally beat me. Woo! <laughs> so Cordy Ranch is in. Uh, beautiful red fruit. Kind of spicy strawberry raspberry easy drinking i really think this will benefit from another year uh of aging but it's really good amazing food pairing wine this site always makes me think of like uh, uh prosciutto and and, mm -hmm. and charcuterie the first thing that pops into my head when i taste that cordy is like yeah. man a little molinari dry a little fin fin finocchino 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 Fino yeah 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 what is that never get that i was like breast you know like uh um, but yeah, it's really funny. There's just certain wines that evoke a, a food image. And after that, we're going to the 17 Morasole. Chris, Gary, what up? Chris, thanks for joining us the other week. So we got. Mom, I'm sorry, Mom. I can't. I can't. Yeah, way to bring it up. Sorry. That's right. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> uh, Melody. 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 Sorry, you cookies. He's always out of tune, so he yeah, can't remember right, Melody. Right? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're we're. In our picks for the the club shipments, we're doing two 17 Zins, which are awesome. One from St. Helena with the Cordy Zin, and then one from the Morisoli Ranch in Rutherford. And so, to make some of the smallest production Zin from Elise ever. The the Harvest of 17 oh yeah. was one of the gone. last kind of water-restrictive vintages for us. There was not a ton of fruit. What did come in was nice, but I'm just saying there wasn't a ton of grapes in those those less than heavy rainfall years. Um, and this yeah, this more is solid. Both of these, to me, when you taste a wine, there's either going to be that immediate, like I can drink these tonight. Both of these, in, in my opinion, another year in bottle. I think they're golden to go yeah. right into glass. So I might recommend like this. 
taste them, nest that cork, drink them later that night for dinner, they should be fine, good to go. A yep. little young, just a little young. Yeah, and that's normal for the Ray wines. It was always like four kind of beginning, and then in between four and that fifth year, they just come alive, and we've seen it for four vintages. Yeah, classic um, Elise kind of style. The day the wine tastes really amazing cool. is the day it's like, oh, we're sold out. Yeah, you know, what and is that's that, how man? it's going to be. You know? yeah. Um, this more solely has a little more texture to it, a softer, rounder palate, almost like a little caramel, yeah. uh, which yeah. is interesting. But I know that fruit's going to... They both carry that, what I would consider classic California spice for Zinfandel, though. There's a little bit of the pepper in yep. there. You get a little bit of those cur cooking herbs, you know, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, good, good, fun California Zins. Yeah, I get a little more, a uh, touch more dark fruit, uh, but it's still red. Uh, darker red fruit and that little jam undertone. I'm going to do a Bon Voyage tier for, for Ray and the boys. The last vintage, man, you know? Like, Ooh. Ray, Jake, Sounds Mike. like something I need to uh, stream on Netflix. Right? The last vintage. The last vintage. I feel like we should be in chain mail. Why is that? I don't know. It just smells good evil, you know? Something I don't know. Those are good. Both amazing food wines. Um, you get, especially from the more solely, a little roundness. The acidity is great on both of these wines. Um, I think 17s and Zin, you know, not over the top on the fruit, uh, even though the fruit is definitely apparent, but the kind of the, uh, the focusness yeah. of, of the acidity is amazing. I think you can get all sorts of different ways. On well, I feel like there. 17 and 18 might go through an interesting thing like we did 97, 98, whereas 17s Definitely. were a little tighter and, you know, kind of a reverse, you know, the 17s were a little tighter and the 18s were more expressive, but 10 years from now, I'll be curious to go ahead and ahead and see how the acidity is kind of yeah. the master of acidity. For think we're, we're doing the show in 10 years? Well, I, I mean, from <laughs> whatever recovery hammock I find myself in, uh, I don't know, sure, you know. I like to think I could still stand upright in 10 years at least, you know. I don't know. I'm, I've kind of done this COVID-36 thing now instead of 19. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I felt just, that last night. Apparently the camera adds 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Had a little Indian food. Had the deli belly. Nice. <laughs> um, were we supposed to go to Petit Sarah next? Yeah. Then you like that? I, All right, I do. Cool. I, so uh, you can change up the flow. No, no, no. The reason I'm I did it this way is I kind of keep the the Zins and Petit as, to me, they're almost their own category of wine. Totally. And then... Well, and they're know, often blended together. Too. Yeah, and then pure cabs for the, the trio cool. to... But sometimes you would recommend you think Petit at the very, very end. It, it all depends on the wines and everything. I had a little bit of this earlier. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, so Another... So it. Glorious Return. Part of this whole show's excitement was uh, the return of Longinou, probably one of the most requested wines we get from our club members. And I will tell you this, honestly, this is the reason we made this. We didn't kind of jump in the car and go out there to try to find the, the Viognier, but so many people love that wine. So we sought out to recreate those wines for the Elise Faithful out there. Um, and Petit Syrah was the other one. Man, this yeah. winery was so, that's what I bought from this winery for 20 years. And, and Petit Syrah, nobody's planting it out there. So finding a good source of Petit is not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, this Dry Creek is just, it's exactly what I hoped for. Yo, I mean, totally. I love this wine. Well, and I don't know, I mean, for the few of you that tuned in, what, two, three weeks ago, we did uh, Old School Petite, Ray's You say the Petites. two of you that, that two the few. Oh, few. <laughs> I'm giving it one more than two, um, and then hopefully more. But uh, we did a, what, 2000 to 2005 Petite Terrace right. show, and they are outstanding. Yeah. This is like California's... Um, kind of un unsung hero and people will blend it into Cabernet historically it's been around forever but they hold up too a I lot love, like I, I love Ray's too. quote every time we do a show like that he always calls me and go man I'm glad you guys like the wines he goes could you take the surprise tone out of your voice <laughs> <laughs> That's He's like, like yeah. leading leading a compliment with the word actually. Actually. This is actually really good. Oh, thank you. So you started yeah. it with this. I'm going to put up that finger just so I don't flip anybody off. That's but, awesome. Uh, yeah, the word actually before com compliment is like uh, John McEnroe hitting a back end. Now, I never normally recommend this, but if I'm going to do a spice rub, this really makes me want to put a little espresso in it, almost mm -hmm. like that style mm -hmm. where you add that little extra facet to the to the crust on your on yeah. your, your on your New York or, or your, yeah. your ribeye or or your you short know, ribs. Like said, go into land. the woods and kill a portobello and sleep inside of it, and then hike it out of the woods in the morning, kind of thing. You know, is that the oh, same that's, as hunting? I don't know. That's foraging, yeah. so it's not killing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's foraging. But petite Syrah, man, there is. 
you know, again, we I think we threw the word atavistic out there when we did our petite sirah flight because every smell and taste petite sirah for me is like I should have the two like cork stripes of purple under my eyes and I'm hunting in the woods with a knife yeah. in my teeth, you know. Yeah, Lord of the Not flies. gonna say naked, I won't do that to you at home. That's weird. Oh. Well, there's there's shows that this wine would pair well with naked and afraid. That's a thing? Yeah, there's a real show like oh, that. Wow, man. Eh, look it up. Um, all right, so yeah, one thing, I mean, I love this Petit Syrah, um, coming from a couple different vineyards in Dry Creek and some of them super old, like 125 year old vines, but typical yeah. Petit Syrah fashion. I mean, super dark, inky, intense, but it's a plush, soft palette that finishes really dry Leave with it to our Petit Syrah. Team, wine team. They found a it's floral amazing. nature in the middle of this wine. There's something totally. really pretty and almost lavender-like that comes out of this wine. Very much so. Yeah, right in the middle of your uh, of your tongue. It's really a, a beautifully crafted wine. Um, hey, enthusiasts at home right now, this is another one of these wines. The website's going to tell you mm. two bottles. Your enthusiasm will be rewarded, but you have to call us. you got to call Melissa. Operators are standing by. Yeah, if you're just doing it online, they will restrict you, like you said, to two bottles. Yeah. So call us if you're the first to call, first top ten, whatever. Yeah, free steak, um, free, free steak times. It's well, <laughs> Ronco, <laughs> you missed your calling. <laughs> the inside the eggshell egg scrambler, man. You know, one of the greatest inventions ever. Wow. It was an outboard motor about yay long. You stuck it in the end of the egg and. Like that. And when you crack the egg, it was already scrambled. That sounds like psychology today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just scramble that brain. The square egg maker, <laughs> the bedazzler for putting rhinestones on Sounds everything. like you were up late before there was anything oh, on after midnight Absolutely. when everything was just infomercials. That's right. when you were at Anybody that's watching the show today, if you even know what the words UHF refer to on the weeds, tell us, man. Nobody knew about the, it was like your TV had the channels like 1 through 13. Mm. And then there was this dial that was like 14 through 100. And you were always fascinated as a kid. You're like, there's the whole one. Wait, What's what? all this about, man? You know? Yeah. I remember those days. I love this wine. This Petit Syrah is my style. I am, when it comes to really pretty well-balanced wines, I can appreciate them. But my particular style, I like them savage. I like them a little drier. I like them a little more deep, dark, and fruited. And this, this Petit's exactly uh, what I look for. In yeah, this any kind of fatty meat. Charcuterie would work, but you get into like... Duck pâtés, duck rillettes, um, the steaks, the short ribs, all of that with some fat content will go a long way here. Ah, Filipino food chicken adobo, man, you know, with that little sweetness from the peppers would just sing with this. Um, you know, petite sirah for me has always been also something that I serve towards the end of the meal, like the end of the flight. Mm -hmm. And so I often would cross over the end of a hearty meal with oftentimes blueberries and chocolate had to meet up for me yeah, to oh, make like petite that. sirah sing. It's definitely um, some blue fruit here for sure. So I went back old school and did the old uh, uh, Betty Crocker, man, the, the the blueberry coffee cake, you know, with a little mm. chocolate addition with this wine was just a home run at the, at the house. Well, also that, that ground coffee that you were saying would match up perfectly. The mole sauce. So or a the... good breakfast petite sirah. You got coffee, you got coffee cake. I think we should just run with that, man, you know? A good For commuter sure. petite sirah. Yeah, but, I mean, after you're done with it, you might want to brush your teeth before you hit the road because, uh... <laughs> or a little half glass of uh, bubbles, Prosecco, maybe some Chandon. Let's let's plug all the ones around here. Schramsberg, Mum, Carneros. Little half glass, like oh, swish it awesome. around. You could spit it, but you should probably see. That's what I want. I want a guy. I want a guy in New York on the elevator with his petite straw going. Hang on, I'm almost on the twelfth floor. I got to finish this. Hold <laughs> on, man. You know, like I got to get to the office. Um, yeah, and I, I would love to hear people when the wines arrive for the the club. We talk a lot about from our end about our food experiences and what we're doing with them. I would love for you guys to chime back in and show us some of the dishes and what you're pairing them with. Uh, Brad Nelson, if you're out there, man, you know. Uh, B. Nels thing, already chimed in when I was off stage. Oh, I saw go. his name pop up a Brother, little bit. Brother, you know, the thing you pair with wine beautifully is friends, man. There's no such thing as you alone. You've always got a, a, a the fire crackling fire on the outside terrace while we taste wine together. So it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of one of the things I love most about wine is, especially in our neighborhood, you open a bottle and just sit out front. It'll take less than 10 minutes for neighbors to notice, and then they bring some wine over, and um, there are still ways to be socially responsible and socialize. I believe some people have overblown this whole thing by saying you have to stay in your house wrapped in plastic. 
We've managed to find ways to be social, and everybody's cool. We got their own tables. It's not like we're all in the hot tub together. Because I don't really like that. That's weird, man. You know. Well, that's not what you told me two weeks well, ago. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Story changes minute by minute, <laughs> day by day. Um, and so are the, what is the hourglass days of our lives? The days you know? of our lives. Okay. Um, so this is touted as one of Russell Bevan's favorite wines to make. Also, I'm pretty sure that uh, one critic gave it higher, high scores and the other another critic just tasted the wine and said, these collections of wine and this wine are some of the best wines I've tasted at this price point. I know V Wine Cellars, who champions our brands. Carlos Thank you, Scott, Scott and Carlos and Alan. Alan, uh, sorry, Alan. See? God, yeah. Holy mouth. Yeah. Uh, but saying, like, this is the best $55 Napa Valley cab we've ever had. Uh, Today. And this I morning. will, yeah, I mean, yeah. that hour, that <laughs> minute. Uh, no, but they were standing behind it exactly what no, we originally said. Like, this is crazy good for and it makes sense because we have so many single vineyards and some like to be solo artists and don't play with the rest of the more solely band or the tijin band but when they collect together it's ridiculous and then the price just goes to 55 dollars. not going to use the word easy it. but it just seems like so much of what i see happening in napa is to launch yet another high price wine i love russell bevan and the team and and, and oh. reed scupney and and ben and zach and, and josh back in our cellar uh, and Rachel, uh, who was one of our crush pad gals before she got lured to the dark Bricks side. Bricks and tips. Uh, Bricks and tips. Yeah, yeah man. Um, but their passion mm -hmm. for making this wine at this price point was they put just as much dedication into this as we did for any of our single vineyard smaller production wines. And I love that about our team. For sure. There's, a, there's an achievement pride that goes on with this wine. So Elise, I think for years, has always been known to kind of bat out of its its average. Very much so. I think the quality of what's in the bottle is not easily understood by the price point sometimes. And your club members are getting this for $44, $44 a bottle for this. It's ridiculous. Okay. There are also some, will remain nameless, some uh, uh, critics that these prices are too low for them to even spend their time with, which... For us is like a huge compliment because yeah. we've got wines that over deliver for the price point, but the fact that they won't even taste them or score them it's to like, each their own. It's like I tell my wife, uh, don't hate yourself for loving me. <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're I mean we're stoked with the people kidding, that did. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine knows that to be true. She's already like, how does he know? <laughs> yeah, right. She told you on wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, my feet are curling up a little bit right now. <laughs> uh, but these, I mean, honestly, every every single single vineyard, all these barrels are specific kind of lots. They're separated. And then they come together to make this wine. So it's, it's wines. It's fruit that we paid way too much to have at $55 a bottle. But we pieced them together all along, and so it over delivers well over. I know we've just touched on that, but so it's really cool. Like we it's, just, we it's just got ridiculous. Our, our first in a series of calls, so people have. I love this about wine drinkers; they have all started planning a new series of parties out there across the U.S. Vaccination parties. All of these people are like, "Got my second shot! Woo! Come over to the house. We're drinking wine, man. You know, I love it. I love people using wine to celebrate that. I love that people are yeah. like, we're, we're there." The light is official at the end of the tunnel. Let's push forward through it. But just like a race, finish strong through the tape. Don't pull up <laughs> short, man. Keep tight out there, people. I don't think that story is quite over yet. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I just That's love the sure. fact that people are, again, with wine. You know, It's not like you have these national holidays that somebody else decided. I love the creativity of people out there to go, it's Tuesday. Woo! Perfect time. Let's sure. do this. You know? Yeah, I think uh, too many people say these special bottles you know, for, oh, we need an anniversary or a wedding or uh, it's a birthday or it's a special day. I like to celebrate when my partner has a bad day. Don't point at me when you say that. It is. A, <laughs> it's a reason to open a good bottle of We're wine and talk friends. about, it's you cool, know, man. Yeah. Um, or when it's a great day and it doesn't have to be Saturday, Sunday. You don't want to prop these bottles up uh, to be above and beyond what they are, their wine, their art, their, you know, science and everything coming together. 
but they're meant to be enjoyed and not meant to like just save for that special date because you're bound to be disappointed if you uh, if you save these special. But at fifty five dollars forty four for a club, that's a this is a full throttle cabernet. This is not a sort of notion of hey let's blend the leftovers. This is a full throttle dedicated cabernet. I love this wine. This wine is awesome. Ready to rock and roll. Why it's gone. Um, but I would say if you, you know, you're getting your six bottles and you need to fill out a case, don't be afraid of this one. If you're on a budget, depending on what that budget is, $44 for that cab, you put that against any $95 to $125 cab, you're going to yeah. be in great shape. You know me and Matt. Yeah, if you want to fill out a case, you need six of the Longinus, six of the Petit Sirah, and six of the Napa Cab to go through your club shipment. That makes... Oh, it's two cases. <laughs> well, after See the Longinus, you got to go through uh, Melissa right. because that is on And the Petit Sirah. And the Petit. So basically, you're selling things that uh, gatekeeper get. Oh, no, that's there. You just have to show a little, you know... you got to be quick. Yeah, so. you got to be the early bird to... Uh, Strike while the iron is hot, people. All right. So now we're into single vineyard cabernets, and we got the you know the two uh, uh, twin sisters there in Rutherford. You've got uh, uh, Morisoli and, and, and Tijan, but we'll call them fraternal twins, cool. uh, which technically suggests one boy, one girl. So I said girls, but whatever. Which one's the girl? Um, hey, yeah, that's the tough one. You know, which I, one identifies them? I find <laughs> if I'm going to put the two side by side, I find the Morisoli to be more sensible, better balanced, with rounder edges, feminine. I find the Tijan to be harder around the edges, a little more tannic, and so I will make the masculine there. And that's just, that's not a good or plus negative thing. That's a, a kind of an Italian brain looking at the influences and what the vineyard gives us. Morisoli has just a touch more available water in their vineyard, whereas I think Tijan might be a slightly drier site, so I think we get a little mm. bit more of the tannin from Tijan. But okay. That's my broad brushstroke comment for the day. Yeah, I won't even touch on that. Um, but we just poured the 18 more Soli Cab. Mm. We did taste this with at the finishing stage with Chris Morisoli when we went through all the vintages of Morisoli, and we uh, ended on this, and this was his favorite. Um, this is also one of our actually, I mean, Ray made exceptional wines. We're going back in like 2010, 750 and Mag are ridiculous, 13's on. The fact that both um, of these wines were made back in 01. You know, back in the 90s, I think 97 is when we first see Tijan and Morisoli next to each other. Together, yeah. yeah um, I mean, these actually, are... Actually, yeah, I don't know. I know we we did uh, Morisoli in 90 or 91. Right, but I just met Tijan and, and Morisoli as a, as a duo. Um, and they've both been exceptionally well made by the Ray uh -huh. years. But man, this 18 Morisoli, Chris... You know, after the show, he's trying to be nice to everybody, but he's like, that 18 might have been the best version from our family's grapes, like, ever. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm yeah. tasting it. It is smooth. It is dense, dark, intense, concentrated, amazing flavor, but yet it hits the palate, and it's got that classic Russell touch of texture, like, velvety, silky texture. And I think, what when did we open these? Maybe... 20 minutes, 15 minutes before. Sure, right after breakfast, typically. Well, that's normal, yeah. but not today. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah. oh, you mean like for, for this show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a good 20, 30 minutes. Because I feel ago. like that little bit of uh, opening time has has just given this this mocha chocolate smoothness that is I think we've gone through ridiculous. decanting infinitum here. I think people kind of understand after a while. And again, if it's your first show, the whole thing is oxygen. So wines like this, yeah, we're drinking a 2018 Cabernet. You know? Do most people do that? No, they're going to lay it down for a few years. In my case, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to drink these pretty quickly. If you find it too dry, mm. decant it. If it's like me, and I think this is absolutely gorgeous right out of the bottle right now, then don't mess around with it, you know? Make it your own. Order more than one. That way you can drink one. And after you finish bottle number one, your brain's going to go, oh, man, that was perfect for me. You know, I can drink these right now. Or I would probably lay them down for five years. But you need that first bottle experience to kind of give you the your own personal insight into how you want to drink it. And I needed my Christopher experience when I started working with him because when he said straight out of the bottle, it's, uh, you know, you pop the cork. And so I just meant, and I thought he meant pour it into the glass and <laughs> boom, and the bottle was just open. No, he means straight out of the bottle. So. No better aerator than when you've got that whole bottle going, you're making <laughs> that like, gurgle. Oh, oh my God, God. it yeah. just works. Yeah, it's like mouthwash. Um, but this is a stunning Cabernet. But and please that's drink responsibly. <laughs> 
What is that? What is that? That's up to your own interpretation. That usually means you surround yourself with more responsible people than yourself. That's drinking yeah. responsibly. Did you uh, see the Aaron Rodgers video where uh, he was in the back of a pickup in Green Bay with a case of probably Miller, I think, just to keep it Wisconsin. Uh, but then it was a big thing, and but he was waving to everybody. Yeah. It's not illegal to be in the back of a pickup in Wisconsin. Well, I, so I don't know why it's a deal. Like, what's wrong with that? Do, There's do nothing wrong have a with problem it. with it. I mean, no, no, no I, uh, I, I, I'm sure some assets did, but <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me he's like throwing cans of beer at people. And no, no, no he was he beer, was really good. This. He just held it up and said, "That's what we're doing." <laughs> I'm trying to go home and right. drink my sorrows. Picturing the neighbors dropping the candy. Go, see how many people are going to drop my passes before they start understanding my pain. You know. Yeah. So what we did, and I think I. Oh, by the way, Aaron Rodgers, I know you're looking potentially for something to do next year. If you want to pull some part-time humps with us here at Elise, we we got some tasting room hours we can throw you throw your way. Oh, I'd rather him just go to the Niners and. Uh, that'd be pretty. Call that'd be pretty cool. It would be. Garoppolo's out. He's got a huge chip on his shoulder from not getting drafted. Uh, when he could have gotten yeah. drafted. They drafted Alex Smith instead. Anyway, moving back on to one. Um, so Brother Alex, you're my hero. Ridiculously good this morning solely. And back to the reason that all you club members, possibly even people joining the club, I don't know about this, but because we put together such an amazing collection of wines that are higher end, we have two of our top end cabs. We've extended a 25% discount to lower that to that average that we're comfortable with. But you're getting over-delivered wines from a price point that so, normally wouldn't be there. So if you were going to drink the Classic Club, okay, or the white, the Classic Club would be these six wines right here. So this is what our Classic Club shipment would be. Yeah. That's, so one white, five reds. That's still hovering at what, $300? Yeah, about. Come on, man. These six Ridiculous. bottles of wine, I mean, it, 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 I love the value of the club. I really do. I think they've done an amazing job with the quality to the price. Yeah, how many wine clubs are saying you can be a member for a full year, get two shipments, and it be a total of $600? That's ridiculous. $50 Where a I was working before, yeah. it was you need to spend two grand a year just to be a member. So 600 bucks, you get amazing wines introduced to and then you get your discount every time you order wines but also you get to customize it in the very beginning if these wines yeah. don't work for you fifty dollars so. a month a, like a dollar fifty and change a day that's like you upgrading your latte every day man like, well, no, just... yeah it's like four lattes every day <laughs> Depending on who your latte maker is. Some are, just some say, are better man, than other. I cannot believe I paid six dollars for a cup of coffee the other day, man. You know? Well you live in St. Helena. That's, That's very true. Happens. That's very true. Man. That's what happens. Uh, are we ready? We oh. is. But are we worthy? Very fine line there. No, I don't know. We'll let you know, TJ. Man. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do it. This is my left hand. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> well, look at you it. with the twirl, man. Yeah, well the I got to. Yeah, I gotta, there, man. Oh, That's a spiral. TJ and spiral. Uh, and Ray and Jake, you guys built one of the greatest bars in the history of the wine business, man. This thing, like, I want to build a hundred foot long version of this. This is this is just the best sliding textured bar I've ever worked on, man. You know? Yeah, I feel like I could I could play shuffleboard or yeah. that without the sand on the bar. But if Pretty you guys awesome. got any time coming up this summer, we need you to sand it down and retreat it. Yeah. <laughs> Put them to work. Come on, Ray. Just mm -hmm. make a quick drive down from mm -hmm. Oregon. You know, we'll pay for your lunch. It's all good. Also, an awesome uh, mm. what beer pong bar or so the Tijin immediately has that that kind of that blueberry blackberry chocolate. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just leaps out of the glass at you. Um, it's a brilliant site. I, I mean, as far as I know, I think there's only two of us in that entire vineyard at Tijin. Uh, Your buddy? Yeah, it's, it's you know. Is he watching again today? 100 point winemaker, that should be rain. Uh, Do uh, uh, Christopher and I need to take you down? <laughs> like, you pick your partner, and uh, I'll act like my glory days. Actually, of... he has to find another player, and then we can. They really want to play us two on two in basketball. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carpy is. He, Chewbacca's easy to post up, man, but you got to keep up with the. He always manages to find a shark point guard, the, you know. Okay, well, I don't mind Garden Carpenter, too. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you hear that? I know you're way bigger, but 
That's why God gave me a butt to box you out of anywhere you can use your length. So, uh, yeah, it's going back to my dad's teaching of basketball. Nice. Uh, yeah, we should do that. So we're in the Tejan Vineyard, and this is Rutherford. Um, some awesome winemakers, Chris Carpenter, I think before Celia Welch may have gotten fruit from there. Celia. She's just on the other side of Morisoli getting her J.J. Cone fruit for Scarecrow. This little area, Scarecrow, Morisoli, Tejan, one of the best spots for really fruit, but cab especially in Rutherford. I love the sign at Scarecrow. It goes, welcome to Scarecrow. We're sold out. You should probably turn your car around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> they should, uh, yeah, maybe not. They should have a little code and just scan your code, yeah. and then they got all your information. Absolutely. They'll call you. Don't call them. But there was a moment when I was standing at Morisoli with uh, with Chris. We talked about it on the Morisoli show, though. But it just, I could have been anywhere in the world. There's something about this oh. spot in Rutherford, right, that has classical kind of feelings to it you're looking at the terrain and the slope and the weather that day and it just there was something that echoed about this site that made me think of some of the greatest wine regions i've ever stood in my in my travel well also if you're standing in the tejan vineyard and you're looking around and you see ingle nook which is historically amazing for napa valley so the best cabernet ever produced and you've world. got your morisoli and your scarecrow you just look around it's like oh yeah tokalon's right there and farniente's right there i mean you're looking at some of the most historic famous parts of napa valley like and we all owe that to, to john daniels for sure for definitely and and you you of all people me with my name recognition who was the vineyard manager for ingle nook was it mr rodriguez that really in that book yes, yeah i read it. i don't know the he he actually was su whoever that was was super powerful in working with ren harris to um, kind of get the unionized kind of working to take, sure. take care of the farm workers that bust there. He was ass. literally going to replace Mr. Chavez and the, and the entire farm workers. Totally. Like, that was, that's how impactful the farming has been in terms of celebrating. Yeah. The vineyard teams that we work with right now, in my opinion, are the greatest grape growers on the planet. And this isn't just because we make Napa Valley wines. The complexity of what we're aiming for and the highbrow winemaking that's going on here. Those vineyard teams right now that we work with are absolutely some of the great craftsmen, I think, that we, we really are blessed to get to work with on a daily basis. Yeah, without, without that whole team, man, none of this happens. They're hired artists, basically. And you tell them what you want, and that's what they do. And it's amazing. Um, you know, they're, they're like kind of lead point of the farming you really tell that person he feeds it to his crew and they just execute exactly how you want so it's like it's like you're hiring a picasso and saying this is what i want and do it well maybe picasso is a bad example um i, know, it's I, like, I never it's, met the man it's so. customized art it's artists that will do it towards your specifications, one, and they're amazing. One of the coolest things I ever saw, though, was, I, I can't remember who the cameraman was, but they had Picasso in his later years, 70s, you know? And to me, art has this amazing ability to endure no matter what. And it was a time-lapse photo, and they gave Picasso a light and had him draw out into open air. And when you do the time lapse of it, it's this really brilliant face that he designed and drew out into open air. But by doing it by time lapse, you traced all the light's path and everything. Whoa. Was, and he didn't even know where he had laid the lines. There's no what? canvas to look at, man. Like, I was just blown. That to me is when you see the separation. When we talk about wine sometimes, there are great wines that are being made. But artistry is a different level, man. Yeah. There's just that moment where you see things differently or more creatively than, than I think us normal civilians out there do, man. You know? Well, that's when, when that combo of art and science come together. And no, no matter what, anybody that's making amazing wine, they're bringing those two things together. And they have help just like we have help. We have people that are locked down with chemistry. Ben, our cellar master, and Zach are chemistry gurus. And then you've got your Russells that are f amazing gurus of just tasting and that, that artistic creativity. And they come together and just make amazing wines. And that's what we're releasing here. So uh, Here's my yeah. challenge. 
Okay, I'm putting this out there right now for club members. And look, if you're watching the show and you're not a club member yet, just go to our website. It's pretty easy to jump on board with us. It really is. Um, I want somebody to design me a meal with the classic shipment. So let's take that guy and that guy. If you're getting the classic shipment, or you're going to sub out the shard, or you're going to do red wine only, put the pizza on, my challenge to you is I want you to submit me a menu. I want you to tell me what kind of food. I want to do like a six course meal with your wine club shipment. And uh, for my own personal collection, whoever gives me the, the sexiest six course menu, there's a free Magnum of wine in it for you. There Whoa. it is. You heard it here first, folks. Wow. I want you to jump on. I want you to show me. And sometimes if you tell me, actually, we drank all six bottles. We had no food. and But I had the five coolest people I've ever met in my entire life around the table. I think that ought to count. Hey, you heard. So there's two chances at a Magnum. Drink them so all. Good. Videotape a little part of drinking them all and free Magnum. Yes. And we'll uh, we'll negotiate uh, extensively over the uh, the phone about which Magnum that uh, will shoot your way. And also, uh, now that we're back open, pretty sure we're still shooting for Tuesday. But that date might change just because. Hey, we got to take advantage of people that are here. All our Zoom tastings, um, but we'll let you know via Instagram what do you want to do and next week? Facebook. What do you want to taste next week, man? Anything? Let's let the mystery. You want to go Pinot flight? You want to do a Pinot show? Rachel, what do you want to taste next week? Oh, you know I love a Pinot. Let's do a Pinot show next week. Let's do the Morgado, okay. the Addicts. Ooh, and like that the sounds good. We'll introduce you to Standard some of the other amazing yeah. brands that we have here. Maybe next week's show starts to introduce 2100 Hoffman Lane, and we do oh, the Pinot show to like kind of cross that. over a few of the... Yeah. All right. Any of you Pinot files out there, uh, next week is going to be your, your show of shows. I love it. All right. Um, this stuff, amazing. So if you have any questions, reach out to Christopher, myself, Rachel, Melissa, um... Anybody here can help you with it. If you need to customize things, respond to the email that you've already got uh, or received, proper English, um, and just let us know what you want to do. We'll Remember, work you with it, but this is an amazing collection of wine. I would say probably take what we're giving you and then add to it to form a case or do whatever you want to do, but you're going to be happy with all of these wines, guaranteed. Bottle of day, it's all we ask. Cheers. Thanks, Cheers guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. See you guys next week.